Hello people, welcome to the channel Free Management Education. Today we will discuss about normal distribution with some of its solved examples to clear the concepts better. Okay, moving on. So let me just start with an example. The length of a pin made by an automatic machine. The length of a pin is affected by many independent causes such as vibrations, temperature, wear and tear on the machine on which it is built, right? And raw material properties. Okay. So all these are independent causes. So, but uh, the effect of each cause is not very large compared to other effects. So, when a random variable is affected by many independent causes and the effect of each cause is not overwhelmingly large compared to other effects, then the random variable will closely follow a normal distribution. So, also the time taken by an assembly worker to complete the assigned task repeatedly, the weights of baseball, the weights of baseball depends upon the density of the material on which it is built, the uh, tensile strength of the material, the temperature on which it is built, etc. The tensile strength of the batch of bolts, the volume of soup in a particular brand of a canned soup are good examples of normally distributed random variables. All of these are affected by several independent causes, but the effect of each cause is small. Okay. Not one cause is very large compared to others. Also, a normal distribution curve looks like this. So, if you imagine that mm, uh, the cycle of life starts, the height of a person starts like this. Okay, you are very small at this time. You are much taller in your uh, age of 20s, 30s, 40s. And then when you are old, you seem to become small. Okay. So, it follows a normal distribution, kind of like that. Just imagine it like that, you will understand it better. So, this is the normal distribution uh, formula. Fx equal to 1 by sigma root 2 pi e to the power minus x minus mu whole square by 2 sigma square, where mu is the mean of the x or the random variable. Sigma is the standard deviation of the random variable x and pi and e are constants with their respective values are 3.14 and 2.71. Okay, moving on. So now, if x follows uh, n mu sigma square, this means x is a random variable which follows a normal distribution with mean mu and sigma square. Okay, if this is a normal distribution curve, and if x follows a normal distribution, then this is the mu. Okay, this is the mu or the mean, okay. and sigma is sigma is the standard deviation one standard deviation from mu this is one standard deviation from mu on both sides again this is two standard deviation from mu standard deviation is sigma and sigma square is variance sigma square is variance okay here it is one sigma this is two sigma and also here if you draw this this is three sigma again from this one sigma two sigma and there is three sigma okay so this follows a normal distribution. Then z equal to x minus mu by sigma is a standard normal variate with ez or the expectation of z or the mean of z, mean value or the average, okay? ez equal to 0 and variance of z equal to 1. So what is z equal to x minus mu by sigma and why do you use it? This is also known as z score. Okay. Suppose you went to a company and there are and you are given a project with uh, uh, to work with six different people with ages like 30, 45, even 50, 25, like that. But all of their, all of the ages are different. Okay. But the problem is they have much more experience than you, right? If you are 25, they have much more experience than you. So to make it a level playing field, we just do this like x minus mu, your age minus the mean value of all their ages by the divided by the standard deviation from the mean. If the mean is 30 and your age is 25, then the standard deviation obviously is 5. Okay. So if your age is 25, then 25 minus 30 by 5. Again, if someone's age is 35, then 35 minus 30 by 5. And if someone's age is 45, then 45 minus 30 by 15 because his age is 45 and mean value is 30. So, this is how you make a level playing field Then all of them are equal. This is the level playing field where wages doesn't matter and the work matters like that. So, Z score is here to standardize on standardize or normalize the variables. Okay. 
just uh, remember it with standard eyes it, it makes it a level playing field so a standard normal variate is a normal variate with mean mu equal to 0 and standard deviation sigma equal to 1 with probability density function this if you put the value of uh, the mu equal to 0 and sigma equal to 1 in the previous function that that i just said fx equal to 1 by sigma root 2 pi e to the power minus x minus mu whole square by 2 sigma square you will get this particular value okay where the value of z tends to um, the range of the value is minus uh, infinity to infinity plus infinity obviously if z z can be any value right so this is the normal area curve this is the mean mu equal to 0 here and sigma equal to uh, one this is one standard deviation again two standard deviation again three standard deviation z can lie anywhere here also here also here also this is just an example the probability that the variate would take is denoted by the shaded area in the curve the variate would take a value between 0 and z this can be read from the tables of area under standard normal distribution we will explain this with an example okay later on just go through it understand it better this is our standard uh, normal curve this is the mu this is the mean okay sorry for this this is mu and this is one standard deviation this is two standard deviation and this is three standard deviation okay so from mu to one standard deviation from either side it covers 68.2 percent area okay from mu to two standard deviation on both sides it covers 95.4 percent area and from mean to three standard deviation on either side covers 99.7 percent area and this is the standard normal table we have to find the values from this um, table to solve the problems now we will solve a problem to understand this concept better okay now we will solve this problem to understand the core concepts and also how to read this normal area table and also how to uh, understand this curve here okay. normal area curve the area is here so the first question is the height distribution of a group of 10,000 men is normal with mean height 64.5 inches and standard deviation 4.5. Find the number of men whose height is less than 69 inches but greater than 55.5 inches. Okay, let's solve the first question first. So z equal to x minus mu by sigma. We are standardizing the heights here. That is our first height is 55.5. That is this one first 55.5 minus the mean that is 64.5 by sigma that is 4.5. Okay. So if we solve this, this becomes minus 2. Now we have to find we have to normalize this height also so again z equal to 69 uh, minus 64.5 by 4.5 so this becomes 1 now how to find this height here uh, find the uh, height who's uh, less than 69 inches but greater than 55.5 this this is the mu okay this is the mean and in the left hand side of mean these are all negative and these are all positive so minus 2 this is the minus 2 standard deviation this and this is z equal to 1 that is 1 sigma this we need to find this area to find the number of men whose height is less than 69 but greater than 55.5 that is corresponding to 55.5 this 55.5 it is minus 2 but greater than 55.5 that is greater than minus 2 but less than 69 and corresponding to 69 it is 1 that is less than 1 okay so we have to find this area okay so in under this area we have got minus 2 to minus sigma we have got 13.6% plus 
minus sigma to mu that is 34.1 percent again mu to 1 sigma that is also 34.1 percent okay so that is approximately 81 point something but we can write it 82 percent okay so 82 percent of men have their uh, height less than 69 uh, inches but greater than 55.5 uh, inches okay so uh, how to find the number of men that is 82 percent of 10,000 that is 82 by 100 into 10,000 men that is equal to uh, 8 to 0, 0. so 8 to 0, 0 men have height between 69 inches and 55.5 inches Similarly, you can find the height uh, between uh, less than 55.5% and more than 73.5%. Let me solve this here, the number B part. Okay. So, area under the normal curve. So, it's less than 55.5. We have already fi found that less than 55.5 is minus 2. But again, I'm writing this here to uh, understand, to make you understand the concept better here it is minus 2 right this minus 2 here we have already got this so less than uh, minus 2 so here less than minus 2 is wait a second uh, less than minus 2 is here the this part okay that is 2.1 plus 0.1 that is uh, 2.2 percent 2.1 plus 0 0.1 that is 2.2 percent that is 2.2 percent men have heights less than 55.5 percent that is 2.2 by 100 into 10,000 men okay so that is 220 right okay. now the c part again it's given that more than 73.5 so let's normalize it 73.5 minus 64.5 by 4.5 it becomes 2 so this 2 okay we have to find the height greater than this this area because it says more than 73.5 and after normalizing it we find the value of z is 2 so more than 2 this this area gives the more the, the number of men whose height is more than 73.5 inches okay so that is also uh, 2% here it was 2. Point, again 2.2% that is also 229 So, this is clear. Okay, the next question. The outflow of funds at an ATM is known to be normally distributed with a mean of rupees 74,000 and standard deviation of, of rupees 4800. Okay, the machine is programmed to notify the manager if the daily rupee volume is very low, that is less than rupees 60,000 or very high, that is more than rupees 87,000. Okay, that is it notifies the manager if the rupee volume in the ATM is less than 60,000 or very high that is more than rupees 87,000. What percentage of the time the machine is likely to notify? Okay, we have to find that. So let's draw the normal curve again to make the concepts more concise and clear. So suppose this is the mean here. Not suppose this is the mean. So this is 74k, 74,000, okay. So 60,000 will be somewhere here, 60k. And this is 87k, right. So this is the mean mu. Okay, these are the standard deviations. So this entire area, I have told that this entire area is 0 0.5 and again, this entire area is again 0 
right total is 1 now let's z transform the x values so what is the x value at first 60000 that is 60000 minus x minus mu that is 74000 by sigma that is standard deviation that is 4800 so what is the value if we solve it it becomes 0 0.2.92 now let's find the 2.92 here so here is 1.7 2.3 2. Point, here it is 2.9 okay now 2.92 how to find 2.92 you add 2.9 with this point 0, 0.00 or 0.01 or 0.02 these values so corresponding to point 2.0 point, uh, point here it is 0. 0.4982 right so that is the value here now we have to find the area to the area uh, to the left of z1 okay so suppose this is this is z1 and this is z2 we have to find this area first why because it says less than 60000 uh, or more than it and more than 87000 then it will notify the manager so at first we have to find less than 60000 so up to this area this entire area up to up to this this half is 0 0.5 okay and this area this area is 0.4982 okay so we have to uh, subtract it so area i am making it clear once again area to the uh, left of z1 it is 0 0.5 this area entire area this left part okay this left part 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4982 so this 4982 this is the 4982 part okay this is 0.49 let's get it 0.49 because there is no space here 0.4982 so 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4982 we have to find only this area so to find this area we have to what what shall we do we will we know this area minus this area this area minus this area okay again this area minus this area we will get this particular area okay so 0 0.5 minus uh, 0 0.4982 it gives the value of 0 0.0018 now let me draw another curve because this has become a lot dirty okay so let me change the pen's color okay uh, suppose it's black now suppose this is the mean that is 74k and this is 87k now we have to find this area because it says more than 87,000 and less than 60,000 we have already found the less than 60,000 area now more than 87,000 area now let's find a z2 that is 87,000 minus 74,000 by 4,800 so by simplifying it this gives 2.71 right now area to the right of z2 this is z2 so how to find this area we have to find this area minus of this area okay this is 0 0.5 and corresponding to 2.71 where is 2.71 this is 2.7 2.71 is this 0.4966 right So uh, let me write this area to the 
right of z2 that is 0.5 is entirely this area minus point 0.4966 that is this particular area okay this area so we can get this area that is point 0.0034 therefore when will we it, uh, notify the manager it will notify it when it is less than 60,000 and more than 87,000 so less than 60,000 is 0 0.0018 and greater than uh, 87,000 is 0 0.0034 so we add them required probability is 0 0.0018 plus 0 0.0034 it becomes 0 0.0052. So it will uh, notify the manager about 5.2% of the time. Okay. So I hope this is clear now. So the first point it is unimodal, it is bell shaped and it is symmetrical curve. Okay, and its mean median modes are all equal. So let's explain it. Um, let me explain. It. This is the normal curve. Okay, so if this is the mean, sorry for this bad diagram here. So what is meant by symmetrical? That is, in uh, either side of the mean, it occupies equal area. That is, it is this is, seven, is 0 0.5 and this is also 0 0.5. So this is symmetric. This area is equal to this area and mean is the dividing point here again it is unimodal that is it has one mode and bell shaped you can see that this looks like a bell i have already explained symmetric and this is the mu and its mean median modes are all equal that is this is the mean this is the mode and this is the median so its mean median mode all coincide here or are, are all equal now suppose uh, uh, now the second point as x increases numerically this function fx equal to 1 by sigma root 2 pi e to the power minus x minus mu whole square by 2 sigma square decreases rapidly and the max probability occurring at the point x equal to mu and is given by 1 by sigma root 2 pi so as x increases rapidly suppose uh, x uh, suppose the value of x be 5 and mu we suppose it it's the mean value is 3 so and suppose sigma equal to 1 now if you put this values it becomes 1 by uh, 1 root 2 pi minus x minus mu whole square by 2 right now there is a minus sign outside the bracket then obviously this value is minus 4 by 2 so that is e to the power minus this e to the power this so e to the power minus 2 so that is 1 by e to the power 2 again if you suppose the value of x be 10 then minus 10 minus 3 whole square by 2 so this is so this is minus 49 by 2 right that is minus 49 by 2 so this gives a value between 24.5 so that is e to the 1 by e to the power uh, uh, 25 so that is e to the power minus 24.5 suppose it's 25 so you can see that the value of this is increasing and 1 by e to the power something if 1 by e that is 1 by 2.71 right and 1 by e square means 1 by 2.71 whole square so if this is 49 this is also 49 and 1 by anything large tends to 0 anything large you can see this is 1 by 1 is 1 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 okay 1 by 3 is 0 0.33 see this one this is less this is much less 1 by 4 is 0 0.2 this is this goes on decreasing and it tends to 0 so that is why it says that as x increases numerically fx 
decreases rapidly and the maximum probability occurring at the point x equal to mu suppose if you put x equal to mu here that is minus mu minus mu that is 0 and e to the power 0 is 1 so this becomes 1 by sigma root over 2 pi i hope this is clear if you have any problem do comment in the um, comment section normal curve is asymptotic to the x axis so that it approaches the horizontal axis on both ends but never touches it see i have you know, drew this diagram like this i never touched it here touched it on the line so this is it is asymptotic to the x axis okay for any value of x fx would have a positive value no portion of the curve lies below the x axis all you can always see that the every portion of the value lies below the x axis uh, above the x axis sorry the normal distribution curve is defined by two parameters mu and sigma you can see that the the fx function it has two functions mu and sigma but the sigma uh, but the pi and e are constants here so x and mu are the parameters of this uh, fx uh, the, the function because as you can see as x increases numerically this function fx it has x and mu are the parameters but sigma uh, but the pi here and the e are constants here so x and mu are the parameter uh, x is the random variable mu and sigma are the parameters here because this defines the whole function if mu is a particular value and sigma is a particular value then this can change the whole fx function so there are two parameters mu and sigma the change in mu mean displaces the normal curve you can see that the this is the normal curve and if this is the mean here then so um, change in mu so this is mu 1 this is mu 2 this is mu 3 so as the uh, mu increases you can see that the curve is displaced like this from this mu to this mu to this mu and mu 1 is less than mu 2 less than mu 3 again change in sigma another parameter two parameters mu and sigma so change in sigma causes a change in relative position if this is mu 1 this is mu 2 this is mu 3 okay next property a normal curve has two points of inflection where the curve changes its curvature what is the point of inflection the point of inflection is the point where the curve changes its curvature suppose the curve runs like this and suppose this goes like this so this is the point of inflection okay that the curve changes its curvature they are situated at one sigma distance from mean on either side of it so i have already told this is uh, one sigma distance this is again uh, this is again my mu minus two sigma distance this is again mu minus three sigma distance okay and similarly here mu plus two sigma and suppose this is mu plus three sigma okay so this inflection points is situated at the one sigma distance okay one standard deviation one standard deviation from the mean okay the points of inflection uh, of the curve are x equal to mu plus minus sigma and if x equal to this 1 by sigma root 2 by e to the power minus half obviously when it says that is one sigma distance then obviously this this is the point of inflection and this is the point of inflection because this is where the curve changes its curvature okay now if x1 x2 and xn are independent random variables that are normally distributed then their sum is also normally distributed this is an algebraic property you just have to remember you just have to remember this okay and variance vx1 plus vx2 variance variance how do we write variance it's like sigma square then sigma x1 square plus sigma x2 square like this plus dot 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 plus sigma x n square okay so mean deviation about the mean this is a property root, root over 2 by pi which is uh, equivalent to 4 by 5 sigma approx and mu plus minus 2 by 3 sigma covers the middle 50 percent of the area this this middle 50 percent mu plus minus 2 sigma here's here this will be another line so this will cover the middle 50 percent because this one sigma standard deviation covers 68.28 percent remember so this area covers mu plus minus 2 by 3 sigma covers middle 50 percent of the area under the normal curve now quad, quad, uh, see this this middle uh, uh, one sigma distance from the mean covers 68.26% area. 
so obviously 50% will have areas uh, uh, like this okay. now quartiles are given by q1 first quartile mu minus 6.745 sigma and q2 quarter second quartile mu plus 6.745 sigma these are hard facts you just have to remember them and qd quartile deviation uh, is to mean deviation is to standard deviation is 10 is to 12 is to 15 so this is the normal distribution curve again so this is important for the sums we have already discussed it so this is the end of this video so thanks for watching please do like comment and subscribe to this channel for more updates okay and my email id is given in the description box do comment if you uh, want some specific videos on some specific topics okay thank you stay safe take care of your family